What's your name, brother? J-Lo? J-Lo. J-Lo. Okay, J-Lo. J-Lo, my name is Judah, all right? Let me ask you something. What, where do you see yourself on this sign right here? Like, what's your uh, nationality? What's your race? You're black. Okay, you know your scarf is black, right? But how can your scarf and your race be the same thing? Hurry up! You understand? That's a color. Black is a, just a color, that's all it is. Right, because you're not black, you're, you're brown skin, right? right? So what is your race? Human race, okay. So you're a human race. So let me ask you something. In the human race, right? Are you equal to all people? Really? You're equal to all people in the human race? Bring it up. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Oh, wow, okay. But you said it's... But, but every human is equal, but it's not the way it's supposed to be. Something is inherently wrong with that thinking, though. Think about what you're saying, G-Lo. The human race is all equal, but it's not the way it's supposed to be. Why is that? Could it be that the human race is not a thing, but there is different races of people? Absolutely. One of the races of, let me ask you this. Where, where you, what's your nationality? Where are you from originally? From Haiti? So let me ask you this. On, the, on this list right here, where do you see the Haitians? Where do you see the Haitians? So you see on one side it says black American blacks. So right here where it says Haitians, the name Haiti or the word Haiti is comes from those who conquered that land, that island of Hispanola. Right. Would you agree with that? Okay, the first, but the thing about it is, it's the first nation of independence, but the first black nation of independence, is it at the top of the societies in the world? Absolutely not. So that has no, that has no bearing on anything, right? That doesn't mean anything, right? So, because you know why? The people who gave that name to the Haitians were your oppressors. That's right. The same people who steal the resources are your oppressors from the land of Haiti. But God doesn't call you Haitian. When you, you believe in the Bible? Okay, so can you look in the Bible and find Haiti or Haitian in the Bible anywhere? Absolutely not. So what does God call you? He calls you human? That's nowhere in the Bible. The word human is nowhere found in the Bible. Son of God, okay. God says that you are, a, you are an Israelite from the tribe of Levi. I'm going to prove that to you. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28. Because what we have to realize is when here in America, we're taught we're Haitian, we're taught we're black, we're taught we're everything else but the sons of God. You understand? That's why they treat us the way we do. That's why when you said that the human race is supposed to be equal, but we're not, that's because here in the American dream, they're teaching you a lie. That lie is that you're not a son of God, but you're a Haitian. You're something that really doesn't exist. You're black, which is just a color. You understand? Read what you got. Deuteronomy 28, 15. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, and thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this is Moses, a Levite, an Israelite from the same tribe that you're from, telling his people, the Israelites, that if they will not listen to the voice of God, that, they, that something's going to happen to them. He said it shall come to pass, meaning it will happen, right? So this is, this is taking place thousands of years ago. You understand? But Moses is telling his people, just the same way I'm telling you right now, something's gonna happen in your lifetime that's gonna change everything and, every, and everybody that you know. Watch this, read it again. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments. So listening to the voice of God was to observe and do all his commandments. Do you know what today is? Do you know what today is? Okay, so that's one of the things that we didn't learn here in America or in Haiti. That today was the Lord's Sabbath day. That's a commandment. Yes, today is the Sabbath day, right? Come on. To observe, to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses, all 
all these curses. So Moses is telling the people, if you don't listen to the Most High God's voice and do all of his commandments, like observing the Sabbath day, that all these curses, what, what happened? What would happen with those curses? Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. They shall come upon you and overtake you. Is curses a good thing? Is a curse a good thing? No, right? So if a curse is not a good thing, why did we not listen to the voice of God and observe to do his commandments? Verse 37. Why do we not listen to the voice of God? If he's telling us, if we do these things, we'll be all right, right? But now he's telling us if we don't keep his commandments, curses would follow us everywhere we go. From Haiti to America to France to Canada, no matter where we are in the world, these curses would follow us. This is one of those curses. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So it says that we will become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. A byword means that you'll be called everything but the Son of God. That's right. You will be called Haitian. You'll be called nigger. You'll be called black. You'll be called a thug. You'll be called a criminal. Everything that you may not be, they will call you that because of the curses that would follow us for not keeping God's commandments. Like again, like again, today. Are you, today, are you going to work? No? Okay, so today's your day off, right? You going to go to the store today? Maybe buy a few things? Okay, did you know that that's breaking the Sabbath? You know that. Oh, you didn't know that. Okay, all praises. So that's why we're out here to teach our people. We're literally come out here every Sabbath to teach our people what we must do to get back in the good graces of the Most High God. Because here, right, we're going to read to you that here, we would come here into the islands on slave ships because we broke God's commandments. I'm going to read that for you right now. Give me that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. So it says Egypt, right? Give me that Deuteronomy chapter 5. It says Egypt, but Egypt actually means something. It doesn't mean the actual land of Egypt, although our people are scattered all throughout the four corners of the earth. So there's possibility our people can be in Egypt. But we're talking about how do we get from where we come from, which is Israel, how do we get from there to this side of the earth? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 6. Uh -huh. I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So what does Egypt mean? From the house of bondage. From the house of bondage. You know what bondage means, Jilo? I'm sorry? I'm sorry, what is it? Oh, obviously bondage is a bad word. Okay, but what does it mean? What does the word bondage mean? No, bondage, bondage, like you're put in bonds, in chains. So what does bondage actually mean? The, the, you said that, exactly, slavery. That's what it means. So go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, because it says that we would go back into Egypt, which means bondage, slavery, again with ships. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. You mentioned before that Haiti was the first independent black nation, right? But how did they, before they were independent, what were they? What were they? We just said it. No, 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 what, what were they? Yes, what were they? In Haiti, before you got your independence, your freedom, what were they? Slaves, right? So how did those slaves get to the island of Hispaniola, the island of Haiti? They took them from Africa. How did they get there, though? Yeah, brother, brother, so brothers and sisters, we're out here teaching our people. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are God's chosen people, the Israelites. That's something that we've never been taught in these churches. We, you grew up in the church, right? You grew up in the church? So let me ask you something. When, when, when were you ever told in all of your years growing up in the church? Hold on, don't go nowhere yet, Gila. Don't go nowhere yet. Where were you ever told that you were the Israelites? Or what tribe you come from? Never. That's what we out here trying to teach you, G-Lo. That God says, of being that we 
didn't keep his commandments, we would lose our identity, we would lose our homeland, and we would even lose our minds. Because if you see how we treat each other out here in the world, how we treat our women, right? right? Think about the music that we listen to and how the music denotes or, or uh, shows us how to treat our women, calling them bees and hoes and all that kind of stuff, right? Thoughts, right? All of those things we learned where? Did we learn that in Haiti? No, we learned that right here in America. We learned that right here in a place that they say is where all the opportunities are. Gilo, we're trying to show you that everything that you've learned here is a lie, brother. That means the very life you live right now is a lie. Look at all these brothers in the purple. We used to be in the same predicament. Titus 3 and 3 real quick. We used to be in the same situation on the other side of these signs. We used to live the same way, act the same way, carefree without a care in the world, eyes closed to everything that is destroying us. But God says now we have to awake out of sleep. Watch this real quick. This is the book of Titus, chapter 3 and verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. We used to be like that. We used to be foolish. We used to have no idea who we were. And we would walk around with our pants sagging under our behinds. We would try to have sex with everything that moves. Smoke all the drugs, drink all the liquor. All because we had no identity and no clue who we were. And no clue who God was to us. Do you understand, G-Lo? So what we're trying to show you is what we used to be, now God has called us to become leaders. Fathers, husbands, a nation of a nation that God said was the apple of his eye. Watch this. Read on. Disobedient, deceived, uh -huh. serving diverse lust. We were dis disobedient and deceived, serving diverse lust. That means we were in all manner of religions. We were Rastafarians. We were in voodoo. We were, we were in Islam. We were in Buddhism. We were in Christianity, which has nothing to do with the Bible, which is actually the opposite of what the Bible says to do. So God says now that we used to be that, now we must come back to who we truly are in these last days. You watch the news, right? You see all that's going on. Crazy storms, crazy weather, nuclear war on the brink. Gilo, it's coming down to that time, brother. Run me that Romans, Romans 13 and 11. It's time to wake up, bro. It's time to wake up, Gilo. Let me ask you a question. How old are you? 22 years old. That means you got a long life ahead of you. Hope with Lord's will. But here's the thing. Your life won't be very long if you continue living a life that is not according to God's laws. I, I, I can only be honest with you as your brother. You understand what I'm saying? Bring it out. That's why I said we used to live those lives. We understand what it came down to. You may not be in drugs. You may not be uh, a criminal. You may not be none of those things. But as long as you're breaking God's commandments, the wages of sin is truly death. Read what you got. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. The sleep that the slumber and the sleep that we're in is believing that the American dream is prosperous for us as a people. It's a lie. Right. As long as we come here, we are still slaves to all the same people who brought us from Africa to the islands of Haiti, to the islands of Jamaica, to here to America. We're still the same slaves because they still look at you as nothing but a commodity. Right. That's why. Like I asked you if you work, you work today. No, you don't work today. But you will go and you'll buy, and you'll, that money goes to where? Does it go back to Haiti? Does it go to the, com, the Haitian community in America? Absolutely not. That money goes to keep on supporting the lies in um, the American dream. So that's, what, that's literally why we're out here, to break the cycle. So Lord's will, you will hear these words. Give me Acts 3 and 19. You will hear these words, and you will make a change to start even considering to start looking about your history and finding out who you truly are. And then becoming like these men, these great men out here who teach their people the truth about who Christ is and who you are. Right. You understand? Watch this. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. The Bible says that we must repent. You understand? Do you know what that word means? What does it mean? Huh? Come, come around front. Come around front because the, the speakers. Stop doing wrong, wrong to things. stop doing wrong things. To turn your life around, right? 
So God says to read it again. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So when it says to be converted, what does that mean? What does it mean to be converted? It means to change. Give me that, Psalms 19 and 7. It means to change. And there's only one thing that's going to change us. Because you, did you, I asked some other brother, did you grow up in church? Did you, did you grow up in the church also? What, what uh, uh, denomination? Seventh-day Adventist, Catholic, what? Okay, non-denominational, one of those churches. It's a Christian church. But here it is, in the Christian church, we don't learn who we are. We don't even learn that we got to keep the commandments so that we could get from out of the turmoil that our lives present to us, right? Because right now in Haiti, it's crazy right now down there, right? It's real crazy, but it ain't no different from how crazy it is out here in, in America. You know why? Because even in Haiti, here in America, no matter where we are, these curses follow us for not keeping God's commandments. Watch this, read that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. God says his law is perfect. Read. Converting the soul. So if you want to know what changes you or what can change you, you must know God's laws. You must know that you must keep God's laws in order for you to change. Because other than that, people could tell you, you got to change your life, Gilo. You got to learn how to change. You got to change, Gilo. But are they giving you the solutions or are they even telling you how to do it? Not at all. Again, that's our job. Our job is to show you how you change your life because it got to change before this place goes. Because if this place goes and you haven't changed your life, you're going to go with it. You're going to go with it. Is that it? Go back uh, to Acts. Acts 3 and 19. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So the sins that we commit, you know what sin is? Let's get that. Let's get what sin is. Again, we're here to teach. So if you got questions while I'm speaking, just ask. Okay? You're not going to be cutting me off. Because we're out here to teach our people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who are the Israelites according to the Bible. Give me that. What's, what is sin according to the Bible? This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is what? Transgression of the law. So if you break God's commandments, that is sin. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. So if we're breaking God's commandments, that means we are in the midst of sin. Are we going to show you a commandment that you're not keeping right now, other than the Sabbath day? But we're going to show you one of those, set, those sins that, we're, that we commit that we don't even know is in the Bible. Watch this. This is the book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. So the wages of sin, the price for committing sin, breaking God's commandments, is death. Ultimately death. The, the wages of sin that got us here in Haiti, in America, serving slavery, and, and then ultimately now still in slavery, is because we broke God's commandments. That's right. So now, well, now that we're at the bottom of society, we ask ourselves, how do, first of all, how do we get here? How do we get out? We have to start keeping God's commandments. That's right. what repentance is. Making the change, going back to what God said to do in the first place. Check this out, Gilo. Sister, sister, what's your name, sis? Chloris? DeForest? Okay, sis. Sis DeForest, what is your na what is your race? What is your nationality? See, the same thing you said, she said, right? Uh, right, so let me ask you this. Like I asked you, Gilo. If you're black, right? Because your face mask is black. Your sweatshirt is black. Are you in fact black or is that just a color? That's just a color. So let me ask you this. What is your race? What is your nationality, sis? Because black ain't it. Black is just a color. Your skin is brown, like I was telling Brother Gilo. Your skin is brown. So what are, what is your race? <laughs> he said the very same thing. <laughs> but sis, sis, 
if again, I'm gonna ask you like I asked him, if you're a part of the human race, are you equal to all people? No, you're not. Not under this uncivilized world. That's exactly what you, that's pretty much the same thing Gilo said. Sis, the reason why we're asking you these questions is because we've learned a lie here in America. Right. Right. We've learned that the human race is something that God actually uh, esteems. God says there's no such thing as human race. You can read the whole Bible from cover to cover and never find the word human. Did you know that? But here's what God calls you. Let me ask you this. Come here, real quick. Real quick, real quick, on this sign, where do you see your nationality, right? Or I'm part of Judah. From the tribe of Judah? Real quick, sis, you know that you got to keep God's commandments? But that's, that's the thing. G-Lo, we're trying to show our people that if we don't keep God's commandments, the wages of sin is death, right? Yeah. So how do we, give me Psalms 119 and 9. Real quick, g -Lo, before you go. Psalms 119, verse 9. Check this out. You got to apply God's commandments. Oh, you know what? Skip that. Give me the law. Fringes. Give me the fringes. Because we have to understand what the law is in order for us not to break it. Now, if you look around to all the brothers that are out here, you notice something that's in unison, right? You look at them. What, what do they have on? Same color, right? But what else? What else do you see is different about their garments from what you got on and what we all have on together? What, look, look at the garments. Look around. Look at the brother across the street over there. Huh? What do we have on that you don't see that's just that's on your 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 wares, your clothes, but we got on all of our clothes. It's not just the, it's not just the color. What is it? Take a good look. I'm gonna read I'm gonna read the scripture so you can get it, all right? Watch this. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. This is a commandment or a law that we must keep for us to be changed or converted. Check this out. Speak unto the children of Israel. Which that is you from the tribe of Levi, Gilo. Check this out. And bid them uh -huh. that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So now when you look at the brothers who are out here passing out the flyers, right, and us up here teaching, you see something called fringes on our garments. Again, like you said, the color is the same, but also these fringes on our garments. Right. These fringes on the borders of our garments is a commandment that God gave us. Right. So as long as we're out here not walking around with it, we are in the midst of sin. That's right. We're supposed to wear this every single day on all of our garments. Let me show you why. That they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. Throughout their generations. Even now you have some Mexican, in the Mexican culture, you actually have them wear uh, headdresses and some uh, uh, royal garments that actually have those fringes on it. Native right. Americans as well. Because that's our tradition. That's our culture. That's who we are. Right. The Bible has nothing to do with religion. Because our religion is our culture. Our way of life. Right. You understand? But we've been taught in the Christian church especially that this Bible is a religious book. But when you read the Bible, the Bible has laws and commandments for one people, the Israelites, hey. the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. But think about it. You grew up in the church, right? How come they never teach you this stuff? That's to keep, that's to keep us as a people in sin. As long as we're in sin, they could continue to keep us at the bottom of society. Bring it out. Finish reading that and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generation, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue, and it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So now when you see these fringes, when you look upon it, you always are thinking about the commandments of God. Because now every time you wear it and people see you, Think about it. You look around at the other people, do they have it on? Nah. So now when you look at it, you should be thinking, God gave this as a commandment to his people so that, he, so that we would never be in sin, right? This is how we would differentiate ourselves from other nations, from other peoples, 
we would wear these, these fringes. He said that we would wear these fringes and we would look upon it and do what? And remember all the commandments of the Lord. So we will remember today is the Sabbath day and keep it holy. We will remember I'm not supposed to just lie down with every sister I see. I will remember I'm not touching no drugs. I'm not going to get drunk. I drink, okay, but I'm not going to get drunk. I will remember these commandments and do them. Real quick, Revelations 22 and verse 14. Because with keeping the commandments, that's how we change. Remember, we read before what converts us. What converts us is the perfect laws of God that our people must keep. All right, watch this. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. So if we seek to be blessed by God, God has us very simple instructions. Do his commandments. That's right. So what we have done as young men is we've turned our minds from the ways of the world and we've turned our minds to keeping God's commandments, right? So now we try to find out, okay, how can we go out and we can reach our people to do what God says to do so that we ourselves can be blessed. We come out and we teach. We have schools. We have schools so that you can come and learn the commandments. Because the fringes is one of the many laws right. that we've lost as a nation of people. That you could come and you could learn in a, in a peaceful environment how to keep God's commandments and how to serve God. All right, watch this. Give me uh, Acts chapter 13. Acts 13 and 38. This is the book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, uh -huh. men and brethren, that through this man, this man, this man is Christ. Watch this. Let me ask you, what color is Christ? He just always show us that he's a white man, right? Okay, so what, what is Christ? Is, it, is, is Christ just somebody who never existed? Or did he actually walk this earth? He actually walked this earth. Okay, all praises. So watch this. Read that one more time. Acts 13. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. So like you said, we are taught that this man right here is going to give us the forgiveness of sins. But God says that if you want to know the truth, you got to search out his word. And the word is going to tell you whether or not if he looks like this, or what he actually looks like. So we're gonna we're gonna show you what Christ actually looks like in the Bible, right? Watch this. Revelation chapter one verse one, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants. Did you know that you were a servant of God? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know that as a servant of God, if you don't do what God says to do, what's gonna happen? Death. Yes, absolutely. Read on. Things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So this is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Revelation is the revealing of Jesus Christ, right? Because like you said, all the images that we see of Christ today on a TV is of a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. But now we're going to read out of the Bible what Christ actually looks like. Watch this. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool. God says that his hair and his head will be white as wool. So you have a grandfather, right? Does he have white hair? Right? White woolly hair. The woolly hair is the hair that you have on your head. Right. Come on. As white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because when you read in Genesis, the prophecy that, the, that Christ would come would say that he would drink wine in moderation and that his eyes would be red from the drinking of the wine. Okay? Remember his first miracle was what? Turning water into wine, right? Read verse 15. His feet like unto fine bread uh -huh. as if they burn in a furnace. So if you put something like, let's say rice, you put rice in the oven right? And you bake it and it burns. What color does it turn? Black. Yes. That's right. It's the same thing as the describing Christ as a black man. Right. Read it one more time. And his feet like a divine bread as if they burned in a furnace. If you take brass and you burn it, 
you burn it, it becomes dark, comes a very dark uh, uh, brass. Right. So when you read the Bible, the Bible tells you exactly what color Christ was. That's right. Right? Read, uh, go to, give me, uh, is that it? And his voice as the sound of many waters. And he spoke loud. He spoke with authority. That's why it says his voice was like the, like the many waters, like a waterfall. So remember, we have, look, we got a speaker. We have to speak loud so that you can hear and people, whoever else can hear the words of God. Right. But Christ didn't need a speaker. He sat at the top of the Mount of Olives and taught thousands. You understand? With just his voice, because he spoke with authority. All right, give me, uh, give me Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Huh? You gotta go? Listen. Listen, what we want you to do is to do what we do. It's to teach your people. Right. Your people are get, going through hell right now, g -Lo. You know that just as much as I do. So what we want you to do is learn how to change your life so you can teach them how to change theirs. That's right. So they can stop going through the garbage that they're getting treated with and they can stop being destroyed as a people. Right. That's what we're trying to do for you, g -Lo. That's all. If you got questions, on that flyer, we got a phone number and there's a school right here in San Diego where you can come and you can learn for yourself, right? Uh, we got a website with all kinds of free classes and you can learn who you are, what you got to do to please the most high, brother. All right? That's all we're we trying to do for you. So, brother G-Lo, Lord's will, you stay safe, but call us, man. All right. So, again, we are here to teach you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. God calls you his chosen people. And it's high time you wake up out of sleep. It's high time you stop living the American dream. Right. Because it is only but a nightmare right. for you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth